Hello and welcome to a new Highlander video. Today we'll be talking about Oath Control, which is my favorite control deck in the Highlander meta. Also, the only uh, control deck I would want to play in the Highlander meta at the moment, which is not to say that every other control deck is bullshit or something. I would never say that. Mm, so let's look at what Oath Control does. I will briefly walk you through um, the most important aspects of the decklist. I won't go through every single card. You can find the full decklist in the description. And if there is anything unclear, please post in the comments what you want to know. So first, let's start with the core of the deck. And uh, besides this being a regular control deck with removal, counter spells, card draw, and stuff like that, of course, the namesake card, Oath of Druids, is the most important Thing. So, Oath of Druid says that during each player's upkeep, if that player has fewer creatures than the opponent, the player with fewer creatures mills cards until there is a creature and the creature is put into the battlefield. This means that our deck cheats big creatures onto the battlefield. We only th run three creatures, and which are maximally impactful. It also does mean if you have at any point more creatures than the opponent, it will also trigger for the opponent. So this is uh, something to be kept in mind. But usually, apart from Reanimator, decks are not tuned towards all of Druids, so it doesn't matter if they flip a Mana Elf or something like that. So um, another card that belongs to the core is the Forbidden Orchard, because sometimes the opponent maybe because it's a control deck or a combo deck or whatever, won't have creatures, then you can use this land to give them creatures, thus triggering the oath. The creatures that this deck runs, three in total, are um, sort of the best non-legendary creatures you can find for this deck. Non-legendary because um, Karakas is part of the Highlander meta and it's uh, literally everywhere, which means Flipping a huge legendary creature like Grizzlebrand isn't that strong in Highlander because it's quite often the case that the opponent has a Caracas and can simply bounce it. So Archon of Cruelty is probably the best non-legendary creature that there can be. It's a 6-6 six, six flyer, which is decent, and um, the triggers are just insane. At, uh, killing an opponent's creature, forcing them to discard, lose life, you draw a card, gain life, and this is repeated on attacks, so this is... Even if it's killed immediately, it generates a huge value. So that's um, most of the times the creature you want to hit most. Mm. Another creature which might seem odd at first glance, but is really good in this deck is the Sun Titan, uh, because it also generates immediate value. And remember, Oath Mills, which means that Sun Titan can reanimate a 3-mana Planeswalker or a 3-mana removal enchantment or something like that um, when it is flipped. And if it remains on the battlefield, then it can do this over and over again. The debatable third creature. Um, I'm also not quite sure if 3 is the right amount, but under the assumption that it is, then Hullbreaker Horror is probably the most interesting thing that you can play as the third creature at the moment, because it's also not legendary. And um, while it does not have direct ETB effects, it's still very easy to trigger this because um, if you flip this out of Oath, you have your mana open and probably spells in hand or spells, flashback spells in your graveyard that you can cast to immediately trigger the Hullbreaker Horror and bounce spells or permanence. So this has been very decent. Um, the last. A uh, card is uh, something that isn't in the deck at the moment, but I'm considering it because everybody has to consider Atraxa at the moment. Um, drawback being it is legendary, so the things I said about Caracas uh, don't apply. But the thing is, it has an ETB effect that draws a lot of cards, which means if opponent has Caracas, then it is not impossible to recast this at some point and actually generate even more value. But sometimes when you're in a damage race or something and opponent Caracas is this one, then probably maybe the cards that you drew don't really get you anywhere as well. But on the other hand, when this is flipped in the upkeep, 
you reveal cards, then the chance is there that you find removal spells to handle whatever is on the board at the moment. Mm. So it's a card that I'm considering to test. I'm not sure yet whether I want to test it as a fourth creature in the deck or if I want to replace Hallbreak Horror because I'm not going to replace Sun Titan or Archon because they are too central for the deck. Mm. So in order to achieve uh, our deck plan, which is either control or sometimes sneaky, quick, although druid section, we need tutors. And these five tutors are the most important ones. So demonic tutor is kind of straightforward, as is Imperial Seal. They're just very good, flexible tutor spells. And also Enlightened Tutor, it finds the oath, enables turn to oath plays. And as we will see later, there are also other enchantments that are really worthwhile fetching. Wargate is another, it's a bit clunky, but it can still find many different answers and questions. So that's a really decent card, which has um, proven to be very good in this deck. Also, as we will see later, this deck has a little bit of ramp, so uh, band plus X spell is actually castable. And the last tutor is Intuition. Mm, you cannot straightforwardly control which what you get in hand, but you have tons of flashback spells and removal action, uh, recursion action, so that Intuition is a very nice card. Although you could also maybe argue it's more of a card draw than a tutor. But it had to go. It was bound to go somewhere. So so much for tutoring and for card draw. We have um, a total of 13, so I won't go through every card in detail. Uh, basically, you play all the good ones and some interesting additions. So um, basically, which cards you draw, uh, which cards you play is basically up to you. So I run the selection of the best cantrips like Brainstorm, Ponder, Preordain and stuff. And I would also run some bigger card draw spells. It's no problem to cast four mana instants in this deck. So Factor Fiction, Memory D Lodge, Dig Through Time and stuff are also kind of staples for this deck. The interesting card draw spells are Latinum's Legacy and Sea Beyond, because both are two mana draw two spells that have the drawback that they need to reshuffle a card. Um, and actually, I don't know why this always happens, but with three creatures in deck that are supposed to remain in the deck because you want to oath them at some point, it always happens that you draw some of them. And Sea Beyond and Latinum's Legacy can um, tweak a bit um, on your hand and reshuffle the cards into your deck which you want to have in your deck. So that's uh, two card draw spells that I like in general, but which are really, really good in this deck. And also for removal, I'll just present you a short selection. Um, I play a lot of removal, 15, and uh, it's um, on the one side, it's um, cheap removal spells like Portable Old, Souls to Blow, Shares, Path to Exile, On Thin Eyes, and things like that. And then mass removals like Supreme Verdict, Dame, and Toxic Deluge, and also some like hosing enchantments, Mode which prevents non-flying creatures from attacking altogether, and Humility turning all creatures into 1-1 one, one vanillas. Humility and Mode together lock down the entire board because creatures will also lose flying. Of course, this is kind of a drawback because uh, this can be kind of a drawback because you, at some point you might want to attack yourself, but the crucial thing is that these cards generate a ton of extra time, and um, if you have a ton of extra time, you will find a solution um, to win the game despite humility and mode on your board, but your opponent is likely to not find this solution. Mm. Also interesting side aspect, Detention Sphere is a nice removal spell. You can also run Oblivion Ring or something the like, because remember, Sun Titan reanimates three cost permanence, and so you can reanimate hard removal when you flip the Sun Titan. Um, the counter section is also quite straightforward, so you just run the best counter spells, and you need a lot of counter spells because you're a control deck. So you play Force of Will, Force of Negation, you play Mana Drain, Counter Spell, Mana Leak, and also some of the um, sneaky tempo counters like Force Spike and Mental Misstep. So this is basically, yeah, this is not very interesting, this section. You need the counter spells, but there is not much brain going into that, so let's immediately move to the next section, which is Planeswalkers. And the most important planeswalkers for this deck are again the ones that cost three mana because Sun Titan. And the best three mana planeswalkers that we can access in our colors are, of course, Orko, Thief of Crowns, which is just a busted card. And since we are allowed to play it, we just do it. 
and almost as good as Teferi Time Reveler and Nazet Part of Veils. All maybe the three best three mana planeswalkers which we can easily afford with the colors at hand. And also Mu Yanling is a very, very nice planeswalker, which I have the feeling is often overlooked in the Highlander format, but it really does a lot of business and um, is a nice addition to the Sun Titan toolbox. Um, for the not Sun Titanable planeswalkers, we have the Wandering Emperor, which is just a massive card in control decks because it has flash. Jace the Mind Sculptor is the all time staple planeswalker. Some decks cannot run it anymore because 4 mana is quite a burden in the Highlander format, but this deck is one of the few remaining decks that can actually afford to play multiple expensive spells like Planeswalkers. That being said, you also play the 5 mana Teferi and the 5 mana Teferi, but the latter one, uh, the Temporal Pilgrim, is something that I tested, but um, you will also see it in the gameplay videos later on. But I think. Unfortunately, it's not good enough. I had hopes that it would be, but it isn't. Uh, so the hit, Hero of Dominaria is, of course, a very, very nice magic card, but I think this one it doesn't really work. Mm. Uh, talking about the mana as the penultimate section mm, in this little deck tech, this deck plays mana rocks. This is not very usual anymore in today's Highlander format, and I like decks with mana rocks i don't know why um but somehow I, I don't know it feels like magic in the olden days this is why i chose the talisman with the old uh, style which are very pretty so in total uh, you run five mana rocks which are talisman and signets in the main colors and in addition to that you play a lot of basic lands snow covered basic lands in order to support on thin ice and arkham's astrolabe which is a nice cantrip and mana stabilizer. You play, of course, all the fetch lands um, that get you anything. I think this is actually really all the fetch lands. Mm. You play the original duels, all except Bayou, and of course, except for the red ones, because you don't play red. And Bayou is only the two splash colors, black and green, so you don't play Bayou, but you play all the other old dual lands. There is only one shock duel, Hell Out Fountain. The others are not really necessary because nowadays we have also access to a ton of uh, trial lands which have cycling and can be fetched. So you just uh, play trial lands and old duels and fetch lands to stabilize the mana base. And since you don't have infinite space in the mana base, you have to cut somewhere. And incidentally, this is at the shock duels. And one reason why you don't have infinite space is that nowadays you can even play interaction in the land base, like Otawara, Eganjo, Buseiju, and all these good channel lands from Kamigawa. Mm. So that's the mana base, and we have one more section, <laughs> which is rather the misc section. Um, there are three cards that are very important for this deck, but are somehow apart from the main plan. One is back to basics. So you play like 12 basics or so, or even more. So it's, um, if you know that you're going for back to basic, it's not a big problem uh, for your mana base, despite you playing also a lot of non-basic lands. But with tons of basic lands and the mana rocks, it is um, quite likely that you can snatch a game or two with back to basics against the unsuspecting opponent. And also back to basics can be found with uh, Enlightened Tutor can be reanimated with a Sun Titan, so it's a fantastic addition to this deck. Mm. This card instantly can also reanimate back to basics. Seven's Reclamation is a really marvelous card because you self mill a lot with the Oath, and this means that recursion spells that have flashback themselves are really great. And when this spell is flashback, it even reanimates two permanents that cost three or less. And I've uh, revealed many. Uh, interesting options that this spell can target in this presentation so um, this card is big fun and the final card I want to show to you is Memory's Journey when I first played this deck on a tournament I lost at least one game due to self mill because my, the creatures were like the second from the bottom so I milled my entire deck and then I just died and having Memory's Journey in the, in the deck is um, 
Very nice because it can flashback for one green mana and reshuffle three cards into your library and this can prevent you from not dying to self mill. Also this says target player shuffles three target cards from graveyard into library so you can actually also use this as a random graveyard hate against your opponent if they have a graveyard strategy of sorts. So that's a, a quick walk through, um, through the deck idea and um, you find the full deck list in the description as I said and if you just keep watching you will see some gameplay videos. And also one thing that is important to mention, I am not the inventor of this deck. Um, I give all the credit to Toby, to Patrick and to Dirk who showed this deck to me over the past years. And um, yeah, I've started tinkering around with this now about a year ago. And um, yeah, I'm very happy to further uh, develop this deck. And if you have any ideas what um, this deck could benefit from, um, be very welcome to leave comments in uh, the comments section. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, watch some gameplay. So let's jump and do some games with the OS control deck. Um, I want the die roll. So let's see what we have here. Mm, opening hand looks pretty decent. I think this is fine. If mana of all sorts, an early tutor, ramp, mass removal, that should be fine. Mm, let me maybe have a preview pane ready for you so that you can see the cards maybe a little bit larger so mm, i have no clue what i'm playing against so normally i would go for imperial seal into oath right away and um i don't really see a reason why not actually yeah let's do it <clears throat> First, the fetch, and um, we can go for underground sea. Get that oath. Sago, and if they are on a creature deck, then uh, it's pretty nice to be able to slam Oath turn two. If they are more on a controlish deck, uh, maybe simply counter the Oath, then it's sad face time. <clears throat> we'll see. So red white looks pretty decent. Fireball to the face looks pretty decent. Okay. Mm. Yeah, then uh, we have to. Well, maybe against red it might be advisable to go for a basic land. Simply slam this card and see what happens. If they are. They might be mono burn. I don't know if such a deck exists, but if they only slam burn spells into my face, then it will be uh, kind of difficult. But if they are on a. Kind of, I don't know, Naya Agro, Naya Maverick, whatever, then they probably are reluctant now to play their creatures, which would be fine. Mm. So I will want to play some lands and a talisman and end of turn cycle Ash Barons. And then see what happens. Monomorphos. Interesting. I only have one white. 
white mana so far, so I will cycle this. Get a planes. <laughs> okay. That's two out of three creatures. <clears throat> hmm. That's kind of embarrassing. But I do have two cards in my deck that can reshuffle, so... It's uh, not the biggest of problems. It's still a bit awkward. So if I draw the third creature now, <laughs> it's gonna be a party. <clears throat> no, it's an astrolabe. Okay, so let's go for an astrolabe. Interesting. Mm. So this is a demonstration of how to not draw the elf deck. <laughs> mm. So if I ping myself, I could cryptic command end of turn. But actually, I don't really see that this is necessary. No mana drain. Mm, yeah, we can just chill for a while, I think. Maybe they will um, pull off some bigger spell at some point. Um, so that I could... Mana drain and ramp into the Archon. But at the moment, that doesn't seem to be necessary. And I'll still think that Cryptic Command is not very impressive. So, as long as I don't have to discard, I'm not getting too proactive here and simply waiting for uh, things to happen. Lightning Strike, yes. Um, I will get the mana in the next beginning of the next main phase so I can definitely use that mana <clears throat> I don't know if it will be enough for the Archon but it will definitely be enough for the Sun Titan which can then impressively reanimate a land. But it does apply some pressure. Oh, land looks good. So... If I'm not mistaken, I can now... Nope. Hardcast this boy. So this is a rather different role of uh, Oath of Druids, simply slowing the opponent down <laughs> until I hardcast the Archon. Uh, well, it's a bit, a bit odd, but it's fine. I mean, if the end result is I have Archon in play, then uh, who am I to judge? So of course they will get in the Oath Trigger now. Uh, I have to put it onto the stack and then they might choose to use it. Um, that's uh, probably one of the bigger creatures that can result from this operation. So they seem to be not really Naya, but rather Mono Red. Not mono red, I mean, it looks like my old legacy deck from 15 years ago. Mono red is splashing Tarmogoyf.
so they have played another creature if they what are they doing is there some kind of storm going on ah no they can pump the ah. Ah. <laughs> i mean it is some kind of storm uh, also not quite but it's a bit like storm So uh, this is uh, now an interesting spot because I can, I could use the oath now. I have only one creature left on my deck and that is Hallbreaker Horror. Um, if I do that, what happens? I will mill a lot. So I think I'd rather not do it because it's not really necessary. Or is it? I mean, ah, well, it might be necessary. <clears throat> well, give it to me. Let's see how many cards I mill. <laughs> Computing heavily. Uh, five cards remaining, but I do have Memories Journey, so there is not... Um, is Memories Journey in the graveyard already? Let's have a look. Scroll and scroll, yes, Memories Journey is here. So that's not much of a problem. And this can deal damage to creature or planeswalker, which is fine. I don't have a blocker, so I can simply attack with the Archon. And then I can simply enter control mode because there is not much imminent danger. Because with the Allbreak Arrow and the Cryptic Command in hand, then I can easily fend off whatever they might do. So, okay, it's uh, some kind of Sly deck. Burn, Agro, Red. Whatever, so it's a matchup that's, I think, good for Oath Control, especially if I have the Oath Aggro start, like I did last game. So, um, yeah, this hand looks decent as well, although it's kind of a different story now. So I could use Think Twice as food for the Force of Negation if they play evil non-creature spells that I have to interact with early on. That's an evil spell. Unfortunately, Force of Negation is not Force of Will. Mu Yenling. That's not really helpful. Yeah, this could be a Ragavan game. <clears throat> Oh, there is the Force of Will. How convenient. Mm, yeah, chain lighting is not worth the Force of Negation. <clears throat> What's the shortcut for no? Four. Four means no. Okay. Yep, 
Yeah, we might have a bit of a problem here. Mm. It's not much I can do about it. Can play a mana rock. Have myself beat up. Um. Try to buy some time with the Planeswalkers next round. So, so this is their last spell. I would go to twelve. Um, they beat me for five in addition. That would put me to seven. I don't think I have time for these cards in any case, so I can as well use this now. Another card that would have been great on my side. Although, to be honest, I would have some difficulty playing it. And by some difficulty, I mean it's impossible. Mm. So, one of my experimental cards. Unfortunately, way too expensive at the moment. So, I could cast Yanling and shrink that Rakavan. That would be one option. And I think it demands some interaction from their side, so it's probably not the worst. And also, it's not much else I can do. I mean, I could play Oko instead, but it's... I think the Yanling has more direct impact onto the board. Um, so let's do this way and um, use Aritmisa in that turn. Getting a Trium, which is white and blue. Something like that. And then we'll see. <clears throat> See where this is going. Okay, we're um, somewhat in danger. I think I want Rafine's Tower. Um, that's a weird artwork. That's not what I chose, but. Never mind. So what can I do? I can get one of the opponent's creatures out by doing this. I might as well produce a token to do that. Mm. I could elk something. I could produce another blocker. But... So they have only two mana, they cannot get Hexdrinker online, and they need to draw a spell to be lethal, which they probably can do. Um, Oko producing food, gaining three life might be a thing. Two creatures would mean I'd go to one, which is probably lethal. Mm. 
but playing Oko means that I block one less creature, which is also probably lethal. I could use Oko and produce a blocker out of the Signet, which might do the trick. Mm. That's probably fine. Ah, actually, no. I will have to use the mana. And Teferi will be a dead card in hand when I turn my Signet into an Elk. So let's rather produce some board presence and see what happens. I've been probably too slow and uh, my opponent has probably been too Ragavani. So I don't have much hopes for this game. Especially not if they draw something that triggers. Um, because that would probably mean... that I will be... kind of dead. As long as the DRC doesn't gain flying, I'm not dead, I think. If they have one more spell, I am dead. But if they don't have anything, they maybe cannot attack because they only get me to one. And they will lose both Ragavan and the second best creature. <coughs> uh, which is debatable which one that would be. But I'm pretty sure that I will block Ragavan and... Yeah, probably the Hex Drinker because that's the... The larger threat. Okay. Why so complicated? Could simply cast this prior to attacks. To have more uh, surveil triggers, but I would have uh, made this much easier because I would simply concede on that. Mm, that hunt is fine. I have the mana that I need. See beyond to get rid of Sun Titan and to misstep to counter the Ragavan. No, just kidding. My opponents tend to not have Ragavan when I have mental misstep in my opening hand. <coughs> That's a uh, a dream that never comes true. So we have to start with a tap land. Pray that I don't have Wasteland. <laughs> Not playing Mental Misstep targets is, uh, would be the one catastrophe. Having Wasteland would be the second. Of course they don't have a one drop. <laughs> I mean, but they have uh, enough one drops in the deck so that maybe this card still does enough. So black is only a splash and I have it here, so I can go for blue-green. Blue-green means Tropicana.
not exactly what I wanted. So let's maybe play C Beyond. That's good. Should Sun Titan can go back into the deck. We can play Scalding Tarn. Mm. Fetch something with white. Um, no. It needs to be untapped, so it's probably Tundra. And uh, continue to do the Rampy Rampy. I think I will just pass the turn to have Emperor slash Cryptic Command as interaction spells. Mm. And see what happens. So the probability for one mana spells has increased since they have a Dreadhought Arcanist. Not sure how impressive mental misstep is under these circumstances. Magmatic channel. Uh, so that will give another counter there. I don't think I care too much about that card. Colorless Tomb. Have this. Um, and yeah, it's just get rid of that and gain life. It's probably the best that I can do. Another land. That would mean that I can use Cryptic Command and Think Twice to protect this creature, uh, this Planeswalker, for another turn. The question is if that is necessary. Um, not actually. I actually don't think so. Mm, call this. Band. Play to fairy. Use to fairy to which one is more dangerous? I think this can escalate more quickly, so let's bounce that one. Oh nice. Mm, in hindsight, <laughs> knowing that I would have played in uh, the other one. Um, I don't think I need that creature, do I? Ah, well, I do. I do want to protect the other walker. Mm, walker, walker. So... Bit of a business. So if they have a one mana burn spell, then I can finally use my mental misstep. Mm. 
which I would do if they pointed toward my creature or planeswalker. Obviously, because if they decided to laser my face now, then um, I wouldn't do that. Stomp. Of course. <clears throat> I uh, continue to be unable to <laughs> interact with mental misstep. <clears throat> ah, now I can. <laughs> In your face. Okay. I don't want to draw these creatures. I want to oath them. Pfft. So just dirl around a bit and be generally happy. So if they're playing something that I want to counter then it's finally time for cryptic command plus think twice if they're not doing it so which cards have they exiled Tamagot and charge through I guess Why is this one not shown in the exile? This is in the exile, right? I mean, it's, of course, adventure zone, but... Mm, okay. Giving tremble to that creature bounce it in response so they don't draw a card it's probably not the worst idea ah, no, no. <clears throat> I'd rather want them to play another spell so this is a spell that I want to counter. Counter and bounce. That was uh, an important one. Play, think twice, end a turn. Intuition, hello. Play land, take up, take up. only one black mana away from hard casting the Arkham, which is a consideration to keep in mind for the intuition actually mm. yeah I don't need to attack with a with the elemental here I aim to generate a stable and superior board and then with win with unfair creatures so no need to hurry here Yes, this is totally fine. So let us maybe
draw a card first. Fact or fiction? Hmm, that's even more interesting than intuition, I think. Uh, because with intuition... Uh, no, I want to cast effect. Then it's not as suspicious when there is a land <laughs> inside that I take. <clears throat> so, some uh, a cognitive load for my opponent here. I will pick the pile with the land. Oh. I might not have an untapped black source that I can get with windswept teeth, actually. That's regrettable. Ah, oh, that one can get an untapped black source. to do this and 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 this it's actually not the deck plan to hard cast this boy but in this match it seems to be rather the deck plan They discarded that thing, okay. Mm. Yeah, I want to keep that Teferi on the board. And I also want to keep the Yanling on the board. So this is something that they need to handle. Let's see how this turns out. Two cards in hand and a bone crusher giant in the adventure zone. Mm, I'm feeling pretty confident. <clears throat> Become immense. Interesting. I mean. That definitely does something. But not enough. Okay, so first match against Naya Prowess has been won. Fantastic. This time they go first. Mm. There's a nice hand. The only thing lacking is um, so I need the underground sea and I needed a snow land and this hand doesn't offer both. So first things first I only need a sculling tarn. Okay, they seem to have changed the deck because now there is blue mana that hasn't been before. Okay, so this might be blue red or Grixis or Timur. Or Jeskai. <laughs> or five color or four color. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Another blue red land, okay. What does this mean? Ah. Hello, Arcanist, my old friend. Mm. I think I will play Brainstorm in response and see what happens. If I have a force or a daze, I might consider countering. I'm not sure though. Mood. Um, hmm. so I can get a snow land with my mesa and play on thin ice and preordain in addition. That's pretty decent. So this one is too expensive, and this one can stay. Then this resolves. So I need to do this. There is the thingy on top, which I don't need. Let's go for snow planes. Play on the nice and slurp that. Arcanist, and while we are on it, play Preordain. Hmm, mental misstep. Will we need it? We might. Mm, I think I don't want the portent. It's very speculative. Could be good. Could be not. I think I'll put it on the bottom because we're not in turn one anymore. And um, probably better things that I can draw. For example, the fourth land, which could help play the Wandering Emperor. Press of iteration, yeah, not much I can do about it. Mm, rest in peace, legacy. Because at the moment this video is recorded, expressive iteration has just been banned from the legacy format. It's a advertisement for playing Highlander, actually. Come here, you can play your favorite cards from back in the days. So, Marsh Flats means this is not a purely blue red deck probably grixis or jazz guy or four color or five color okay let's stop that nonsense mm. so it's amazing how i'm constantly drawing at least one creature in my three creature hundred cards deck um i think i will go delta for Tryland and have Miss Calc open. <laughs> the Tryland needs to be white. Probably. No, it doesn't because I have a second white source. They bolt my face. Okay. Oh man, had I kept the mental misstep. Everything would be so much easier. Mm. But my Grixis theory seems to be correct. Wasteland. Uh, well, this is problematic. Mm. Okay, fine. Mm. I still have my second white, but I don't have black anymore. So let's get a...
game loss because we've played it stupidly. <clears throat> well, just a dig through time. I mean, it's terrible, but also not threatening. I should have fetched when the mana was still in the pool. That was a mistake. <clears throat> Oh, I do have a scrub line, so Marsh Flats, uh, Windswept Teeth in the last game would have found me the untapped black source. I don't have a bayou, but I have a scrub land, right, because green and black are the splash colors. So, will I want. I'll probably want a th tree land. The one with the, the dry land, which is not white. I think this is a, a thing that I need at the moment. Mm. Yeah, I just play this. And still go for miscalc. But this turn, if they don't do anything that I can miscut, I will just cycle it. Oh, you are here. <laughs> I have been right with four color. No, probably it's just the land that enables the Death Red Shaman. <clears throat> Young Peasy. Mm, yeah, I don't like that. I am afraid I cannot allow that. fan of face bolts <clears throat> but I mean yeah I'm an off control deck so what else should they do with their bolts mm. there's a land land is good um so the question is what do I play and uh, what do I play around if they have a counter like days would be good to play Deluge and not Moat. If they have Force, it doesn't matter. Mm. Moat does affect the power level of my Sun Titan on the board. It might be too late for Moat. But then again, as long as Moat is there, there's not much attacking from their side, but they will have flying creatures in the deck, like Murktide, Forager, and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. I mm. think there are pros and cons to both lines. Mm. I think I'd go for the mode. Go for the mode. <laughs> that could also be a black removal spell. Mm. Yeah, tropical probably. Let's see if this works. Nope, it doesn't. But it doesn't for false reasons, so it doesn't matter too much. Uh, so I get beaten for five at least. And then my Dillard really has to... Oh, damn it. Yeah, then we have a problem. 
No, unfortunate sequence for me. So if I play Wandering Emperor, Exile, Young Pyromancer, then I am at 8. And I have another turn, in which I could probably tutor. Mm, well, I guess I have to try. I draw another land, I can play Sun Titan, but that also gives me nothing but another land. Mm, if they beat me with all, I'm on four. Probably they beat the Planeswalker with one, so I'm on five. Uh, probably this game is lost. I mean, I can go two tour into something next round, but they have two hand cards, one of which seems to be irrelevant, but the others might not be. Is that attack really that difficult? I mean, it's 4 0 or 3 1. There's no reason to keep tokens at home. <clears throat> also, they know my hand, right? I drew a land. They have perfect information. I fail to see what can be complicated here. Maybe it's to do with the hand cards. I don't know. Yes, they knew this one before. So I'm at five. I might survive another turn. So I could get the oath and maybe survive long enough to profit from it. But I might as well not survive long enough. Uh, is there anything else that I could reasonably get here? Oh, detention sphere would be an interesting it would uh 
resolve these problems at least. <clears throat> but then they could removal the target in response, which would mean that it doesn't help. Too much. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as I see it, the only options are either Oath of Druids and Hope. Or Detention Sphere. And since Detention Sphere does only temporal problem solving... I'll try this, and if they have any more interaction, then I'm simply dead. So they lost their demonic tutor, that's at least helping in a way. Mm. So I'm dead to every bolt. No, they know it. Yeah, I think. We might have a problem here. <clears throat> the important question is, does it make a difference to play sword now? If I play sword now, No, it doesn't. No. If they have a burn spell, I'm dead anyway. I think it doesn't matter if I'm at one or a two. I mean, they probably have gut shot in the deck, and if they have the gut shot now, I will. <laughs> they will be. Uh... They may be my guest <laughs> for the most elegant finish of the day. So. Will it be horror or will it be Arkhan? Arkhan would be better. Way better. <clears throat> of course, it is not the Arkhan. Um, but I do have some flashback. I have Think Rise. I can play Sing twice. I can play Latnam's Legacy. I can play Swords to Plowshares. So, that could be enough to survive. Which opponent sacrifices a non-token creature? Well... Mm. In that case, I will, in response, play Latnam's Legacy and Bounce a token. And then I play swords targeting my own creature. Bouncing a token. And gain seven life. So now I have uh, Sun Titan shuffled back in. Mm. I 
which means next round it's another Fifty percent chance to hit Arkon or Sun Titan. And now that I have some stuff in the graveyard, Sun Titan could actually get me something. Ooh, Deshi Ragavan. Not exactly what I wanted to see. Exalt my prismatic ending. Regrettable. No, like, oh, that's not regrettable, that's terrible. This is a uh, stupid Ragavan. Now they can exile the Oath of Druids. Yeah, that's. Ugh, I hate Ragavan. So apparently, my opponent's uh, computer slash MTGO has crashed. Which uh, means we have aborted the previous match and start a new match. So the last one was the best of one unintendedly. Mm, this hand looks like something that one can work with. So I haven't received word from them, but I would assume that they play the same deck. I mean, this could be anything. I don't know. We'll find out. <clears throat> I think I go for the Marsh Flats to have Swords slash Spell Snare as an option. And maybe. Okay, so they have changed the deck, interestingly. Mm, okay, this means. I will now spell snare and I will do so with. Mm. Now nah, I want I want to have tundra actually. It's a bit unfortunate with the second land with a tapped land, but I cannot change it. Um, cannot do anything about it. Uh, so I want to spell snare now, and if they are a deck, which plays robber of the rich. Um, it is uh, very likely that I will have to use my Swords to Blow Shares next turn. Ah, Swamp, how convenient. Mm, still, I stick to the original plan. And play the tapped land. And I have my Swords to Blow Shares open. This, I cannot Swords to Blow Shares. Mm. So conveniently, I draw lands. Um, think I will. Play swamp. Nope. And see beyond. Mm. That doesn't seem to be a need for dam at the moment. Um, I think the sword is still okay next round, so I ponder now. Force of will could be a thing. Yunling portent. It's all not too bad, but I'm liking the green mana. Which means I will probably want to shuffle this away. If I pick up the force now and Yunling on the second, I can do Yunling swords next round. It's actually fine. Mm, the first card click will be the last card draw important. 
Yunling Force. No shuffles. That's actually fine. So if they do something really terrible like Blood Moon or so, I will force. Uh, smuggler's Copter. No, I don't need to force that. That can simply be sorted next turn. Mm. Marcus of the Moon. Um, this means, I mean, I could tap, tap the mana into my pool. But the thing is, then they can in response screw the copter, and then I don't have a removal for the copter anymore. So we're not doing that. Fury. Ah, okay. I mean, the nice thing is they crew the copter now, probably. Mm, what did they pitch, by the way? Forked bolt. And then, if they do so, I can sort the copter as intended. Right about now. And then the planeswalkers down, unfortunately. Mm. Portent. We knew that. I will want to do that. Mm. Don't think that I want to draw any of these. I mean, Platinum's Legacy, I could play in their turn and draw two extra cards. And simply shuffling away that spell that I cannot cast. Which is okay. Legion War Boss, okay. So that's good. I could either go for... Yeah, I'm, I need to force the broken things. So, fetching green. Blue green, I suppose. Tutor into Oath. Hope that Oath will uh, see the next turn and hopefully do some broken stuff. It is the Sun Titan, that's not too bad. Mm, I mean, 
nothing's really bad. I can get Mu Yanling, which is probably the best. Yeah. <clears throat> Yes, I want to do that. <laughs> okay, I have played both my shuffle me into the deck spells already. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, I will vote to exile this boy. So this does imply that next round we will Oath into Hallbreaker Horror if we Oath at all. There might be some suicide attacks from their side to prevent me from Oathing. I think I would have attacked if I had been them so that I cannot use the oath this has been the worst draw <laughs> it's remarkable how often that happens so at least we have think twice in the graveyard as a flashback spell and do we have any interesting permanent we don't. Okay. Um, we must not forget that we can use Yanling. So there is lands and... Oh, we have an interesting permanent. Do we want to use Detention Sphere? That would mean that our opponent can Oath. Actually, I don't think that this is the smartest idea. Um, let's rather go for a lion then. Then we can hard cast the Archon next turn. <coughs> mm. Of course, if they're blocked, I can also Oath. But it doesn't matter much, actually. Mm. Flying creatures. Yes, flying creatures. I need to put it on the stack. Also, probably the last card that I wanted to see. Four damage to target creature. I take two damage if I misstep now. So I guess I just let it happen. Also, one of the worst draws possible. <laughs> um, I will just enter combat or maybe I don't um, now I have to do it I 
might want to bounce my oath, actually. I could have played this more aggressively and have one actually. But I don't know if they have interaction. They have one mana open and two hand cards. And I think there is no reason to rush it. <clears throat> this into play what the fuck has just happened huh what happens the fuck is happening do we get a quick replay of this game so far the fuck is going on Well, this is going to be interesting. I've never seen this before. I mean, I have seen replays of, of Magic the Gathering games, but I haven't seen them starting right in the middle of a game. What the... <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> so, targeting Detention Sphere with Sun Titan's ability causes the game to restart? What the fuck is happening? So, I have no clue what just happened, but apparently we seem to be rightfully in the second game of this match. does the game look say sorry magic awning has encountered an error <laughs> okay so apparently sun titan at the detention sphere makes magic online crash and Okay, so we restarted the game with a new, uh, with a new role. Um, fantastic. Okay, mm. I will not keep this hand. I mean, I do have early interaction, but without a second land, I could do nothing. But with a second land, it would actually be fine. Ah, let's try to keep this. Just remember. Uh, never try to do stuff with attention sphere. I mean, no, that's, there was this thing with LSV uh, doing some infinite loop with Oblivion Rings causing magic, magic Online to crash. And I think Detention Sphere is uh, safe from this bug. Um, as you cannot exile detention spheres, I think. <laughs> but apparently, there is something very weird and buggy going on between detention sphere and sun titan. Okay, so in uh, in a real world scenario, I would have had the detention sphere in play, and. Um, would 
have exiled the... the Eidolon, and then go for attack. I don't know. Interesting. Interesting stuff happens. Ah, the, <laughs> the obvious draws, by the way. How does... How did this happen? Oh, confused again. I'm totally confused. Keep losing track of <laughs> whose turn it is. And no, I force back his, and then I drew the. Huh? Why did I draw something? They did not go first, did they? No, they didn't. Did I just draw an extra card? I'm fully confused. Fully and thoroughly and utterly confused. Mm. So I cannot find land with Narset. So I think I'll just go and portable hole my opponent's creature. Good old Frostwalk Bastion. I like it. Another land I like as well. Mm. So let's try to draw some cards. It's utterly small. Latinum's Legacy or Mana Drain. I don't like Mana Drain, which the opponent knows. Although I might... Ah, no. Let's, let's just take the Legacy. It's fine. <clears throat> I was briefly considering... Um... Using Mana Drain to potentially ramp into Hallbreaker Horror, but with opponent knowing that Mana Drain is there, I think they will not be supportive of that plan. Um, also, I might use this for another thing. So, no Hallbreaker Horror left in the deck. We have to remember that. Brainstorm. Mm. I think no. Wait. No, we can do this now. Actually, cast brainstorm now. See what happens. Mm. Not sure about. Spell Snare Mana Leak. Also, I'm not sure about on Thin Eyes. Planes might be useful. Mm. I'll let, simply let the mana go away and see if I can use one of my counter spells. Yes, I can. And I'll do it. I will draw planes. I will also play planes. I know that on thin ice is on top of my deck, so I can observe whether this is a helpful card or not. This could be a problem. Okay, On the Thin Eyes will be a helpful card. Which means I will simply shuffle away. No! 
It shuffles. Oh, I'm so stupid. <laughs> I thought, yeah, well, drawing two extra cards. Yeah, but I don't draw that card. Hmm. Yeah, well, I would have liked that card, actually. Mm. Yeah, if, I, if you're too stupid to play magic, you shouldn't do it. Well, let's not talk about this any further. That was an interesting train of thought. It was like, okay, I know I need the card that's on top of my deck. So I may not use Latnam's Legacy because it shuffles. But I can do two cards end of turn with Latnam's Legacy. <laughs> Oops, it shuffles. <laughs> So bloody stupid. Mm. Yeah, let's just jump. <laughs> Gosh. Uh. Sometimes I find it amazing what interesting things my head does. Well, that's also bad news. <clears throat> Oh, oh, detention sphere. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I'll just see if I can draw a mass removal, and if not, I'll do this chain concede. There is a spot removal. That might actually help. Hmm. This land is also not the worst. Do this, do that, play Detention Sphere, see if Magic Online crashes. It really... Okay, Detention Sphere is bugged. Okay, so we're back uh, to uh, replace Detention Sphere with Oblivion Ring because apparently playing Detention Sphere or reanimating Detention Sphere causes Magic Online to crash. Which is uh, weird, annoying, and rather weird bug. It doesn't make no sense. Mm. So, let's try again. Mm. Opening end is not very spectacular, but it's okay. If something really bad happens, I can daze. It doesn't can do other things. Um, I don't think that I'm a fan of a Wasteland play in this turn. No, I'm not. I will just play Heath. Go for a basic planes, maybe hard cast days if necessary. Appears to be necessary. Snow covered plains. Counter this spell. Mm. 
It's triple snow to activate, so this is not going to happen next turn. This means that we get a turn in which we can play Teferi. Let's get the Swamp. Swamp. Only noobs call it Swamp. Mm. Pick this one up. Hope it survives. Of course, we have given the opponent a free ticket here, because we apparently cannot counter. Ugh. No reason to play such a bad boy. Hmm. Nah. Oh, that's good actually. So I can wargate into oath next turn. Um hmm. Might as well bounce that adventure. I mean, then they get another initiative, but it's off the board. And I draw a card, which is probably more important. On the other hand, I can... Hmm. If I uptick... And they activate the Faceless save, and then I can 2 for 1 with Toxic Deluge. The lunch in their turn indeed sounds like a plan. So let's take this one up and not play the wasteland, but marsh flats. initiative is really really nasty one of the many nasty things in the Highlander format at the moment that's disappointing but I get to investigate So I will rather swallow this, not deludging. Um, sacrificing the clue. Oh, how convenient. So I need, don't need to play a war gate. Uh, I also don't need to fetch anything. Um, but the band trium it's probably decent So I will want to play the oath. Hmm. 
I'm not overly interested in killing the adventurer. I want that wasteland, but I will only use it in due time. So I wouldn't object if they want to invest their turn to create a token. Sure. Actually, under these circumstances, I do object. but it's actually fine so I can play Deluge and Oath next turn Ugh. it's really not nice At least I forgot to attack. Ah, the author's only the next ter next card. Um, that's a pity. Yeah, well, hmm. then. I would think that this is still called for. So I can't play <clears throat> Dame, because it's the only way to get rid of Thalia. Then I get beaten up by Faceless Haven, but I think 
This is sort of unavoidable. This game is so entirely warped around this one three drop that gives the initiative, it's really sickening. I think the initiative four drops are really fine, but the three drop is really, really... I mean... I dared to tap out myself to play a three drop. <laughs> and I get the utmost punishment for it. But somehow this doesn't feel right. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, pointless. Let's just concede this. <clears throat> This is not a good hand. Nothing on this hand makes sense in any way. Well, I think this is not a matchup that I can win with five cards. Mm. Think I'll go for Savannah. Play this. If I manage to find an oath in time and they don't have an interaction, it might be fine. But I think, yeah. Mono White is, has a tendency to be good against control decks. It has a tendency to suck against mid-range decks. Oh, I remember the sweet times. Playing with Mardu against Mono White. It's always been. My utmost pleasure. Mm, let's see what we can find. Okay, I looked at the cards. Fine. Um, they're actually interesting. Mm. And the island is the least important. Then sevens. Then Oko, not shuffle. Play this. Um, I don't think I need to play that Iganjo. It might be more important later on. Talia's lieutenant, who knew?
So, let's see if Oko is good enough to do some harm in this matchup. So the best scenario for me would be if they attack the Oko, because I can reanimate it. But somehow I fear that this is not what they will be doing. Hmm. <laughs> well. Drawing everything against Mal 5 is uh, not what I'm intending to play. Mm. So, next attempt. of a weird hand. I will try this. I won't complain if it fails. <laughs> Just kidding. I, I will complain. <laughs> mm. But I will probably blame someone else. Um... So let's find a snow land. Mm. Forest. Ooh, a hot shot. That's nuts. Sort of. I mean, it's a land. It solves mana problems. Of course, they don't have a one drop if I have mental misstep. We knew that before, didn't we? Play Orchid and see what happens. The hasty wasty. Mm, let's maybe. Yes. Yes. Play this. Shuffle this away. We have nineteen rounds. Of course. And I even drew the Dovin's Veto that I shuffled away. It's uh, amazing. Yeah, and also we are not playing against Mono White anymore. Uh, but yeah, I should have. understood this <clears throat> mm, yeah we obviously need mana Just go for island, I think. Mm. 
Could have gone for fetch land because we have dig in hand. Oh, <laughs> dig in hand. Mm. What? Um, no, this is not going to happen. So we do have six cards in the grave, right? So I guess we should not hesitate and play this right away. basically want more lands could maybe risk land plus emperor yeah that's fine I guess True name Nemesis. I think I'll just delutch next turn. That's a good draw. Right, for those of you who are a bit puzzled about this card, it has uh, recently been put on the unban for trial. Uh, so, if that resolved, I lose my mind and my game plan. So, putting that away. Mm. Maybe then I will play a an emperor now. Because there is no reason to let it run into counter spells. And of course, why wouldn't they also have a burn spell? I'm feeling a bit unlucky in the last games. Just a little bit. Um, yes, but I mean, this was a joke anyway. I shouldn't have kept the, the opening hand. Uh, it was bound to fail. So, 
This opening is actually fine. I can brainstorm first turn, signet second turn, and have prismatic ending for emergency reasons. Emergency situations, rather. Come on, you can play your one drop. I don't have mental misstep. Mm, but I might find it. I have minor misstep. Uh, it's, I mean, the mental misstep uh, failed to have a target very often today. I don't think I'm going to devote deck slot in this deck for a minor misstep. I think it doesn't do enough. I also have plenty of counter magic. But I, s I suspect it's, an, it's a decent card in tempo match ups and in, um, in tempo decks. I could probably use a Gunjo to get rid of the Ledger Shredder. They play around a Ganjo? What the fuck? Okay. If they did, well, great job, nice play. If they didn't, I don't mind. Mm, I want to find some mana. Mm, I think the Esper one would be fine. Not much business going on here. So Jeskai second spell, so what's the motto? Seems so. Mm. White, white. Only one green. So let's get the other blue white. I'll try him down here. Okay, it's crew versus flood. Amazing. So I probably keep one fetch land open. 
in case I need a shuffle effect. that one. Back to basics is a little awkward. I mean, no, no, this is not going to happen. This is uh, absolutely not congruent with what I have fetched for. So let's just be patient, see what happens. Also fine. Sevens and miscalc. Don't really have any targets for the sevens reclamation. I might be able to catch something with miscalc since my opponent is screwed. Mm. And if I don't catch anything, then I still can cycle it. 4-3. Prismari command. Thought so. So let them surveil. And let them not resolve this. I somehow have the feeling that would have been great to actually keep back to basics. But we chose for the basic land side of things. So let's see if we can counter this. Counter that spell and draw a card. Oh man. Starting to become a little bit impatient, maybe.
so tedious. This is not a cool matchup. And if one player floods and the other screws, it's even less cool. <laughs> ah, this is no, no advertisement for... for this format, actually. Portent. This player wants to portent. Mana Drain and Teferi, that sounds interesting. Um, I'm not drawing them right now. But in the next turn, so. Um, I need to get rid of the dragon now. Uh, maybe not tap Caracas. We might want to catch some uh, dashing monkeys. <sighs> Dig for time. I will Dovin's veto the dig through time. And cast it so because I know I will be drawing mana drain in their upkeep. True name Nemesis, no. We're not doing that. Okay, fair enough. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, they were screwed in the beginning, so of course they have the handful of spells, and I am in top deck mode. Spectacular. I mean, I can still draw something of the Teferi. Okay, that's way too bad a draw. Hmm. 
Oh, that's disappointing. <clears throat> I really like the deck, but these games uh, haven't been much fun. Mostly due to external factors like Magic Online crashing upon Detention Sphere and um, the Shuffler not participating. Mm. So let's see if we can do one more. We can. Mm. Okay, so this is... Uh, Spell Snare, Mana Rock, Oko Stard, which I'm willing to accept. As long as the board is not too full, we can have this. <laughs> I thought about, well, they might be uh, uh, on a mox something deck now i should maybe play an untapped land <laughs> okay they play one drops so that's fine mm. it's interesting uh, the fairy temporal pilgrim has not been very convincing today i tried it because this deck is in general uh, able to play some costly planeswalkers, but this simply doesn't do enough. It was a nice try, but it's... maybe there is some shell for this, but it's not this deck. <clears throat> hmm. Lane. Uh... Renzo, this is not in my range. Mm. So what's my line? I can play Oko and attract some attention from his side, probably. Mm. Yeah, I think using Oko to buy time is just about the right play. Green, colorless, blue, this boy. Great food. And if it absorbs six damage, I will be fine. If it doesn't, we'll see. Okay, all cooled down and no further plays. Um. Ah, they can activate the Grenzo, right? Okay, this uh, is of course a nice control line. Mm. So we probably have to get rid of it. Mm, but maybe not this way. Maybe play C Beyond first. Ah, look at this. Mm. Okay, then Captain Superclunk can go back to the deck. And we can 
play Ulf and hope that Grenzo doesn't hit two goblins, killing us on the spot probably. It hit a tether munch maniac. Sun Titan, huh? Mm. I mean, it's actually it's fine. It will reanimate Oko. <clears throat> there are worse things that could happen. I think we need to get rid of the Grenzo now because it can get out of hand. Um, then we have three creatures to combat, which is fine. Way too dangerous. Okay, so Oko can animate the food token. Finally, some target for a spell snare. Git probe on top, okay. Mm. Oh wait, this is attacking Oko. This is also attacking Oko. 
them, I'm actually pretty fine. Ah, no, they can kill it with that. Ah, that was bad. Bad plays. <clears throat> bad plays. Ew. Okay. I mean, this is actually... I think this is a bad play on their side then, because this way I get my oath trigger. If they had simply sacrificed their firebrand, I wouldn't have gotten it. Which means now I will get Archon or Hallbreak Aura. Archon would be better, as always. Yay, it's Archon! Prismatic ending. Uh, and enlightened tutor. Mm, what can I flashback? Think twice. Memories journey. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah, goblins in general is. Uh, Definitely a winnable matchup, although of all the creature decks, it's <laughs> well, just for the record, the worst hand for today in many respects. I mean, it does have the oath and a mana drain and an imperial seal, but mm. this grudgingly I will do away with the Emperor I need one more land then I can play Oko I have force of will and the memories journey which I can pitch if I find a black mana I have toxic to lunch it's not a good hand but it's a hand that can potentially do something of course cavern of souls I mean, okay, at least I don't have to think about countering goblins. Mm. Which is not as bad because the goblins I can probably handle otherwise. Game seems to be lagging again because I don't think that they have to really think about which creature type to choose. So now Goblin has been chosen. This time it's not my fault. There is no detention of a sphere whatsoever.
can be counted and protection from blue and whatever yeah we need to find that black mana or any mana for that for that matter Ooh, that's also a nice draw actually that does drastically increase the chances of us drawing reasonable mana next turn Maybe I should stop passing when I have a force in hand. Okay, if they play a goblin, then I can <laughs> then I can pass again because I cannot counter that. Um, so this will be a beating. Casual ten damage. Okay, then I need mana or I'm dead. Yeah, there is mana. Choose two cards in your hand draw this turn. Uh, I think I'm slightly too dead to keep the swords to blow shares. Because I will take another three damage now. Probably dead. Did what? Well, there will be a third game then. Birthing pod. Um, probably this is not a good idea. So I might snatch the win with back to basic actually. Didn't I shuffle? <laughs> Welcome back, Souls to Plowshares. Ah, interesting. Um... Unavoidable. Basic land cycling for a forest. Play forest. Play back to basics. Oh, nice. It's a very good draw. Yes, do that. Um, but apparently <clears throat> Phew Interesting. I wasn't really convinced that I can snatch anything in this matchup but it worked back to basics is a really powerful card there are as we have seen today situations where you cannot really use it but often especially in this uh, rather colorful matchup um, the opponent is not really doesn't expect this to happen so it's actually a nice thing. Also, you can tutor at instant speed with the Enlightened Tutor, uh, which can be very powerful. Mm, okay, interesting. So that's been enough test matches for today. Mm, 
I hope you enjoyed this deck tech and gameplay videos and please leave some love, subscriptions, whatever here. Do let me know in the comments if you have any ideas how to improve this deck. Mm. And yeah, don't play uh, bad magic. Play Highlander instead. And uh, we'll meet again next time. See you.